Welcome back to Breakfast Daily on City TV. Now, the head of the NIA, the National Identification Authority, Professor Atefua, will be joining us. He'll be live in the City Breakfast Show studios on 97.3 City FM with Bernard Avla and the team. We'll also be showing you that interview here on City TV. We want you to send your questions. Maybe mm. you have questions about the Ghana card. Maybe you're having trouble registering for one or even figuring out where your card is if you've already registered for it and you want to know, where's my card? How do I get it? Am I paying the right amount to get my card? Uh, I've been waiting for six months. I still haven't got my card. Mm. Any question you have about your Ghana card, please, you can send it to us. Hashtag Breakfast Daily on social media, or you can send a WhatsApp message. It's 0550-585832. That's our line here. Send your questions so we can put them to the boss for you and hopefully get some answers as well. And I know a lot of people have concerns about the Ghana card, especially because the deadline for registering your SIM card hmm. with your Ghana card is fast approaching. It's the 31st of July, which is not that far away. It's just and, 10 and, days. And, and, Kokui, and yeah. also the banks, remember? Yes. The banks, the banks as well. I also demand they, In fact, they, their deadline passed. Yeah, has, has already passed. But yeah. a lot of people are still trying to get their Ghana, Ghana card cards, so that they yeah. can go and update their yeah. details, you know. So, I yeah. am... I'm curious as to what his responses will be in terms of the delays because i have yes. seen i have seen uh videos with ghana cards stacks of ghana cards Act. sitting in offices already yes. printed sitting in offices yes. and not being picked up right mm -hmm. now let me let me share a little bit of my my, my experience when i got my card mm -hmm. initially um, you know there was when they when they started rolling out the process mm -hmm. right I have always been somebody who says, when, they, when whatever the process it is that we have to do, when it starts, I'm one of the first to go. Mm -hmm. I, don't, mm -hmm. I don't do delayed tactics. No, no, no. I, I'm not all about, about mm -hmm. that. So vaccines, go as early as possible. Everything, I want to do it quickly and get out of the way. So Ghana Kai was the same thing. I went, I registered, and they said that, look, they will send you a text message, but they gave sort of like a ballpark yeah. figure of roughly when it should be ready. I relaxed. At the other time when it was supposed to have been ready, I hadn't received the message yet. Mm -hmm. I went looking for the people. Mm -hmm. But you see, they were moving from location to location. Yeah. Then I discovered that they had settled in one particular large school compound, and that's where they were every single day for maybe, what, two months. Mm -hmm. That's where they were mm -hmm. um, receiving people to come and pick their cards, okay. fresh registrations, and all of that was happening there. Look, I went like three times. Every time I would go, they say, oh, your car hasn't come yet. Oh. Mm -hmm. Then they'll give me a pile of cars to look through. Mm -hmm. Then somebody will come and help me. We'll be looking through. It's frustrating, right? right? So sometimes I think that people go, they get the initial frustration, mm -hmm. and then they're like, you know what? Forget it. Exactly. I, I, I ain't going to do this Especially no when it takes time if you have to work. Mm -hmm. How much time do you have to yeah. keep following Take out, up? Yes. It's so So what I did, so uh, what I would do often is that because I was doing... I would do breakfast daily, then I would do Traffic Avenue. I would, I would finish breakfast daily. In my, the break between the two, then I would oh, go yes. and pass there again. Charlie. Go and see if the thing... So the third time I went, I went through looking for... And then they found, there was another box lying somewhere. I went, we dug through the box, and guess what? My car was, was in see. there. These are the things. Anyway, so Professor Atefwa is in. We'll be talking with him shortly. We'll take you to that interview. Again, 550 if you have questions about the Ghana card. And you can hashtag Breakfast Daily as well. Send in your questions. If you have issues, we can hopefully get mm. those answers for you. Yeah. And again, you can follow this on City TV and on 97.3 City FM. Yeah. Um, okay, so here we go. We're going to our radio studio, 97.3 City FM, and uh, we'll be watching the interview with Professor Atifwa, who is the head of the National Identification Authority. And the uh, investigation this mm. morning, I've approved the further investigation of some people. Okay. Um, and, and so it's, going, uh, it's an ongoing process of trying to sanitize mm. the the. Uh, registration process in the public space. Mm. I am, um, I'm, I'm, as I said, we are we are not saints. Uh, people are not um, necessarily better than others. Other people. But I think that the monitoring 
and discipline measures we are putting in place mm. have uh, are generally working. Mm -hmm. um, some are still continuing, and we will continue to also be vigilant mm. and do the best we Could can. it also be that because you've been at the center of a major national program with a lot of media scrutiny and attention, it's brought more light to what you do? So usually corruption tends to happen in opaque spaces. But some of your things you do it in the open so it's, it's going to be very difficult we have received reports mm -hmm. of um corruption say at the elwak stadium we have received reports okay. of guru boys and girls okay. infiltrating our system okay. in one instance i closed down an entire office and changed the personnel in in, in, in the Subin the office whole office in kumasi yes because um we got reports that were credible we investigated we um, interdicted those people and appropriate um, disciplinary hearings or proceedings are underway so that we respect the rights of those people as well. Mm. But prosecutions have taken place wow. and um, they are continuing. Mm. So, but you make a good point. You know, over 31 million, about 21 million of us are photojournalists. All you need is have a mobile phone and yeah. during the mass registration yeah. exercise, you know, you could have over 200 registration centers in a district. Mm -hmm. And uh, at each of those places, you would have the vigilance of the average Ghanaian armed with a camera. Mm -hmm. So um, even though malfeasance occurred and, and um, we had large numbers of places where registration was taking place, um, it is not exactly as it is today where mm -hmm. in a whole district there is only one office. So the pressure is huge and then the demand and supply and then, of course, opportunities for mm -hmm. um, corruption um, are enlarged. Fantastic. Let's welcome our viewers on uh, Breakfast Daily City TV. We have Professor Kenneth Hajimana Tefa. He is the Executive Director, Executive Secretary. Secretary of the National Education Authority. They've been involved in registering Ghanaians. I just want to give you some top lines quickly to sort of set us in motion. So basically, their job is to register all Ghanaians living in Ghana and abroad and foreign nationals permanently resident in Ghana onto the National Register. And they are also to issue citizens and eligible foreigners with a national ID cards. Um, I wanted to start with the state of play. Where are we in terms of card issuance and card distribution? So maybe let's put it in three. So enrollment, uh, printing, issuing, and all those. Because all these are technical terms, right? So you enroll somebody onto the system, you print the card, you issue the card, mm. the person collects the card, you know. So, Prof, welcome. So, give us a quick a minute and a half or so overview of where we are. Then we can get into questions. As I said to, to, the, to, to you, we have so many questions. I don't even know if we have the whole day. Maybe you should buy a time <laughs> and do a, a, a one week, one day a week or something because there's a lot of interest in the NIA, partly because of, the other uses of the card and all the issues surrounding it. So give us a quick state of play. Where are we? Okay, so um, first of all, NIA was set up mm -hmm. to create for Ghana a national identification system mm. of which the Ghana card is a component. And we are to promote the use of the Ghana card in order to advance economic, social, and political activities in the country. Mm -hmm. The law requires us, Act 707, mm -hmm. requires us to establish, I mean, to conduct mm -hmm. nationwide mass registration exercise over a period of one year. Mm -hmm. Following that, we are expected, which is to populate the national identity database, the, the electronic database with the names and the particulars of Ghanaians and all foreigners. Ghanaians in Ghana and abroad, and all foreigners lawfully resident in Ghana who are not diplomats and who are not representatives of international non-governmental organizations. But for administrative and procedural or operational purposes, we limited the mass registration exercise of one year to only Ghanaians in Ghana. To start off. To start off. Mm -hmm. The idea was to capture a critical mass of Ghanaians onto mm. the database mm -hmm. in order to activate the system. So we and we limited it also to Ghanaians aged 15 and above, believing that they would make the most use, 
the most economical and valuable use of the very smart multi-purpose, multifunctional ID card that we're going to issue instead of to, you know, those under 15. Mm. Strategic. Now, the population census that we used was the 2020, 2010 population census at the time from Ghana Statistical Service. And we reckoned that there were about um, 17, um, 18 million Ghanaians aged 15 and about. On the 2010 yes, census. Yes, based on that. Now mm. that the 2020 statistics are available, it shows that it's about 31 point something million, and therefore we um, perhaps uh, should have been aiming at about 19 million. But at the end of the mass registration exercise, we had done over 84.3% of that target, the cohort. Mm. As of today, the enrollment figures are as follows. That is, as of 21st July, okay. 2022. So as of today? Today. Okay. As finished by my technical team. team. Mm -hmm. Total enrolled, 16 million, mm -hmm. 969,000. And 34, 16 million, mm -hmm. 969,000, and 34. Okay. The total number of cards printed mm -hmm. is 16 million, mm -hmm. 535,000, 623. I'll go over there again. Mm -hmm. 16 million, 535,000. 623. The total number of cards that have been issued. issued. So you are flowing from registered to printed to issued. Yes. So that will be a smaller number. Yes. So the total number of cards issued mm -hmm. is 15 million mm. 702,000 mm. 7 hundred and nineteen mm. Mm. fifteen million mm -hmm. seven hundred and two thousand seven hundred and nineteen seven hundred and nineteen all right when we say issued that is the number of cards in the hands of the person of the for who, to whom it belongs yes, who yeah, to whom mm -hmm. uh, they ought to be given okay now the number of cards mm -hmm. not issued that is cards Printed but not issued. Printed but not issued. Stands at 808,493. Okay. Okay. And there are cards that are in different states of printing. Hmm. Okay. Um, some in different states of error. Some so that would be gone into adjudication. So that would be between the registered and the printed. Yes. That space. Yes. Mm -hmm. and, and this is dynamic. So it, it's not a static it's number. Changing. Okay. Yes. Uh, so so we can. Mm. But but um, I do not know if this is inappropriate because in the in the background you are interested in canvassing some of the reasons why um, some people have registered but they haven't received yes. their cards and yes. all of that. If if, if we may. We will get there. But I just wanted sure. you to give the numbers first. So okay. So sixteen point nine registered, sixteen point five printed, fifteen point seven issued, eight hundred and eight thousand printed but not issued. Yes. So you're going to tell me the number of those who are, for some reason, even though they are registered, hadn't gotten to printing stage yet. So, for a multiplicity of reasons. Yes. Is, yes. Is, do you have that number? Uh, uh, no, I don't have You don't have the number? Because, you know, okay. because there are se several different categories. I get you. So you there, probably there have put people, all together. For example, hmm. then are, there are people who have double registered. Okay. That is a criminal offense. That double registration means that they are application that is potentially a criminal offense i should qualify yeah it. it has to be proved yes we have to qualify it. so we have to investigate each on a case by case basis mm -hmm. it goes into adjudication as we call it it joins a queue mm -hmm. and it must be individually investigated those cleared are printed uh -huh. there are those whose cards have gone into adjudication not because of double registration mm -hmm. but because they have sought illegally Mm -hmm. to change their vital data mm. in the custody of the authority. For example, they registered during President Kufo's time mm -hmm. or President Mahama or Mills' time. They give particular date of birth or particular name. Mm. They come this time around since 2018 or 2019 
and they provide an entirely different name or an entirely different date of birth. But their records are in the system. So the system arrests their application as problematic. And again, it joins a queue. And no matter who you are... So it has to be resolved before they can move forward. And you don't resolve it by simply going to the NI office a million times. Mm. When you go, they will tell you what the reason is that your name is different in the system previously as uh, compared to now. Mm. There is no gazette notification of the, of the change. Mm-hmm. You do not have a valid birth certificate proving the date of birth that you have put in there. There are issues that have to be resolved. So these are legal issues. These are legal issues. Before you can effect the change. Exactly. And we it. go through that with them. Mm. Um, of course, they are often unhappy. You get on the airwaves, they will tell a different story. However, the fact of the matter is that there is a legal procedure for registering. And is that legal procedure within your control? Yes, that is a legal procedure within... What I'm saying is that, do they have to, for example, go to the police, go to a court? Are all the things they have to do to resolve that within the NIA? Oh, no, not within the NIA. For example, the Gazette notification uh is, you know, you go see your lawyer, you do whatever you have to do, Mm -hmm. um, and then it gets into... uh, It gets to the uh, Ghana Publishing Corporation. It is published and a record of it is brought, mm. and then you get to NIA, and they examine the interrogate or interview you to make sure wow. that those are... And, and it's a serious So it's an process. elaborate, elaborate see, process. Yes, better. The object is to ensure mm-hmm. that for the first time in the history and future of this country, mm. we create for ourselves mm. a single source of truth, that the National Identification um, System database mm. becomes our truth anchor when it comes to the management of mm. identity. Right. So there cannot be a Ken Atefa at NIA, mm-hmm. then Ken Ajima Atefa at Passport Office, mm. then Akwesi Ajima Atefa at DVLA, and then some other... Are, they, are those all your it. names, by the way? By the way, <laughs> yeah, well, my names. And so, and so you cannot. I see. There will be just one you. Mm. You were born once with one date of birth. Mm. So if you claim that there was an error, mm-hmm. you must prove the original identity from which that error uh, emanated or against which that error was committed. Mm. You must prove that who you say you are today is the same person. person. I wanted to finish that process. So So, you do this uh, Gazette notification. This is part of the adjudication you you described. Since you are a legal person, explain the whole process. And typically how long that process will take? It depends. It depends. It depends. depends That's Mm. why I emphasized at the beginning on a case by case 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 basis basis. we have professionals who are doing this work Mm -hmm. and then those who are that we work 24 7 Mm. people printing cards during the covid the during the lockdown in particular we have people and we still do 24 7 always Mm. working on these kinds of matters and this figure that i mentioned has come down considerably look we we are not generally speaking generally speaking a very 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 truthful people we pass. We find very quick and easy ways of turning the corner, and 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 turning corners around things. But we have a mandate. Mm. Our law says that we must ensure the integrity, mm. the accuracy, integrity, and confidentiality yeah. of the data that we collect. So if you come and you have just changed the hyphen in your name, or you have hyphenated your name, it is no longer the mm. same person. But if if, 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 if I look at the numbers, H, if I look at numbers you've given. I'm, I'm not sure Ghanaians will say, I, I'm not sure it's fair to say we are not generally honest because you've done 50 million cleared. Oh, no, no problem. No, no, the, the, right. number, the number of people who are in the categories that could even be dishonest, at least from your own data, is that is not that much. Oh, no. That, that, that <laughs> it's not that much. Me. Uh, okay. All I'm saying is that mm. the, and, and so, I mean, if, if, if it comes across wrong, that's not what I intend. What I mean is that the average person, given the opportunity, uh. would try to find a way of circumventing a legal procedure. Okay. That's what I'm trying okay. to say. Okay. And, and by the way, these numbers I've given mm. re- are numbers that reflect the changes we have made, the corrections we have made. This is not the number as at 29th um, um, April 2019 when we started mass registration. I told you that during the, mass re- during the lockdown, mm. we cleared a lot of these. And then when I also said that mm. some of the registrations may be potentially criminal mm-hmm. in, in the orientation, mm-hmm. I qualified it to say mm-hmm. that, you know, we look at it to make sure that some errors are inadvertent. Mm-hmm. Some people, and to err is human. Mm-hmm. So when we fill the forms, 
we, before we even print the card, we give you a slip and we ask you to go over it and make sure that the information on it is accurate before we print. Mm. Sometimes somebody is a male, mm. male homo sapien, his card is printed and it says female mm. and the person is mortified and yet they have signed it. We made a mistake. Mm. They have also, uh, as it were, um, assented to it and by, then it's, by, it's become by omission or yeah, inadvertence. Yeah. So those ones we clear. Okay. But the focus ought to be on the fact that mm -hmm. the 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 reduction, the reasons a lot of people don't get their cards. Are multiple reasons. One of them is that during the mass registration mm -hmm. period, we mm -hmm. had over 200 centers in a district. Mm -hmm. Today, we have only one district office uh, in the entire district, mm -hmm. serving the remainder of the population. Who couldn't agree? And I, I, now, if you look at the fact that we have done about 17 million almost, mm. it, and the current figure is about 19, it means that there are some 2 million people Mm. who have to go to our district and regional offices in order to get their cards. Now, that rough, approximately 2 million people, they are spread all over the country. We have established 276 operational district offices. Mm. Every constituency has an office. And 16, one district, one office. One district, one office. And 16 regional, regional office. offices. Okay. Per district. You can go to the region or the district. Exactly. Okay. But it does not compare mm. with the 200 places where during uh, mass So queues are to be expected. Exactly. Queues are to be expected. So that's number one. Number mm -hmm. two, at the registration center during mass registration, mm -hmm. you had approximately 16 to 18 people per center. Okay. To officials. Get, officials. Mm -hmm. Managing that whole process. Mm. Today, you have four people oh. per office. Why? Based on the technical and financial clearance given to NIA to recruit and you don't have, staff you don't have a lot of money. So you wow. we supplement that with national service personnel, okay. but they are temporary. They get experience, they move on, Four all of that. Office. And then with contract staff. Ooh. But but uh, Bena, this is what is interesting. You know, in early this year, we established additional registration points at the various stadia various stadia. Who, you know, about remember, seven. Cape, yes. Elwak. Elwak. Elwak is Cape Coast. Coast. Cape Coast. Tamale. When we did, oh. thank you. Mm. When we did, people were patronizing these places mm -hmm. and they were stampeding the NIA offices, I mean, head office. And they were going to our regional and district offices until the Honorable Minister for Communication and Digitalization, Honorable announced the extension of the SIM card from re registration March. deadline from March to 31st. Sudden drop psh, the next day. Nobody. We had to dismantle the canopies. We had to let go the staff because they were idle. You go to the sports stadium and four people have been registered the whole day. It was <laughs> Are you serious? Four. And, 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 and people sleeping. It's embarrassed. It was embarrassing. <laughs> when we closed the offices, mm. no noise. Then as soon as the deadline started approaching, come towards the end of June, mid-June, we have an avalanche of people coming to our offices. It is typical. But, Doc, Prof, it's, it's, this is so fine. We could say people are last-minute people, but obviously another government agency is making your work difficult, obviously, because basically they stampede the office because 31st March is approaching. The announcement that has been extended makes people feel it's not such a big problem. Yes, we can say Ghanaians should have just organize themselves and come ten a day. But it's very clear that these are external agency deadlines putting a certain level of pressure on your system. So you can be frustrated with the people, but can't you also have a conversation with people like NCA and the other telcos and say, guys, spread this thing over two years. We are not going anywhere. We've built permanent offices in each district. Why haven't you... Or, okay, let me not say why haven't you. Have you tried to do that too? Um, there's been continuous interagency cooperation and conversations to ensure that the process is smooth. We have to be responsible and responsive to the interests and demands of the public. We have done all the necessary engagements, but each agency has a statutory mandate to perform. For NIA, ours is to do mass registration. We've done it. Ours is to establish permanent regional and district offices to provide opportunities for continuous registration. We've done that, and they are working since the 3rd of November. Mm. Ours is to conduct 
mass re- I mean, a, a registration of Ghanaians in the diaspora. We're pr- planning for that. And Ghanaians under the age of 15, in order that they can all access the services and get the benefits of the Ghana card. We're doing that. Other agencies, such as SNIT, NHIA, GRA, have plugged into the NIA um, system seamlessly, noiselessly, and smoothly. We have to remember that. You didn't have to struggle in any way to get the SIM card, mm. I'm sorry, the, the uh, SNET or NHIA and, or any of those. Mm. Opportunities exist for other institutions to be onboarded in a manner that is a little different. But there are other institutions that are also, given the peculiarities of their mandate, the nature of the, 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 compulsory, the impelling need that they have, for example, NCA, to register SIM card uh, SIM cards within a certain period in order to control the kind of crimes and issues that they are facing with, that they set their deadlines cognizant of NIA's registration statistics and NIA's delivery capacity. In our case, we cannot be expected and we're not designed to register all Ghanaians by a certain deadline. It is like having a, a, a maternity ward. You go there as and when. Now, the mass registration was to take off a critical chunk. We've done so. The remainder can be done gradually mm. through the offices. And that's what our scheme permits. Otherwise, it would be like expecting a maiden to have a baby every three months. But as the NCA what know what designed. you are saying, because what you said is essentially that SNIT did this, there was no Wahala. NHI did this, there was no Wahala. Why is it that when it comes to NCA and SIM cards, all of a sudden, it's becoming so problematic. Oh, clearly, they, that's not best practice. And Presnet did this prior to. NHI has done this before. So it's not as if the telcos and the NCA are the first. So which is which why I'm, com- I'm pushing back to you. You are a lawyer who expresses your mind. Why won't you write a letter to the NCA <laughs> boss and say, dude, what you are doing is affecting... John, sir, why, have you... Sp- what's his name? The Anochi. Have you written to him and said, Mr. Anochi, the headlines are are giving us a, because we are not designed to work with deadlines. You, that's a very profound thing you've said. Does the NCA know this? Yeah, the NCA knows that, and I have engaged with them. Have you protested? <laughs> Slow down. You've asked a lot of questions. Yes. Um, let me answer them. I told you earlier that there is, there's been continuous interagency cooperations and conversations about mm. these matters. And mm. so this is not a novel field. Um, you will recall that I think it, it was in February or so, a letter that I had written to um, the National... I mean, the Ghana Chamber of Telecoms was mm-hmm. leaked to the press. Mm-hmm. Um, a letter that was in response to technical questions that the telcos had asked NIA, technical questions that I had honest in, had answered in good faith, was leaked and made to look as if it was some communique that I had unilaterally issued um, seeking to undermine. That, that, of course, wasn't it. So I'm just trying to say that not only with the NCA have we engaged, but also with the companies that they regulate appropriately, openly, honestly. But as I indicated Mm. earlier, the imperatives on the NCA are somewhat different. What is impelling them is completely different from what impels NIA. And within the scope of their mandate and their statutory framework and, I mean, their their legal framework, they've elected to take certain measures in order to advance their mandate, cognizant or aware Mm. of the constraints within which NIA has to operate. All that I seek is for the public not to, is for the world not to get the, or get or sustain the impression that somehow NIA has failed. NIA has succeeded excellently. It has performed brilliantly by mm. any objective measure. And you would recall that the Ghana Integrity Initiative gave the NIA the 2021 Integrity Award for the most efficient public sector organization. That was just in the well. We, we, we just point. We just pointed out today that you are not on the corruption list, so we, we know that. But I, I'm still coming <laughs> no, back but, to but the integrity uh, thing. Is not just about corruption, but it's also about yes. Efficiency but but based on the numbers you've given us, I see three groups of people who would probably want to come to your office. The two million who uh, probably have become eligible over the, the the time the census results came out, who genuinely have to get their cards. The 800,000 who have had their cards printed but have not um, received them. 
and then the 400,000 who may be at various stages of adjudication. So if I put the numbers together, that's at 1.2 million plus another 2 million. So that's another 3.2 million. So if, you, if we look at 3.2 million people who may be coming to you for different reasons, and you say you are in one, di- every, you, are, you have one permanent office per district. So that's 270. How many districts do we have? We, we have 276 operational districts. That means every constituency. 276. Yes. And, and then, then plus 16. 16. Then so, the head office. So you have 282 and then, places people can come to. Yes. And then we have also established a premium center at Calbank, right? Okay. Here, near okay. You. Okay. And we are in the process of expanding or opening offices across the country in Calbank offices. At, at minimum at the regional offices mm. and also MTN we are in the final stages of concluding um, um, agreement possibly to begin operating in some of their offices across the country from next week or Fair enough. Within about because I was using the numbers if you have 3.2 million people spread across the country with probably about 300 offices to go to that that, that ratio with four staff per office it's still very challenging. Absolutely. I mean, uh, you, I was, I was uh, even anxious to share with you mm. the reasons why we have these challenges. I mean, the, the, the why people haven't gotten their cards and all of that. And I mentioned just the disparity between what obtained during mass registration and what exists. Um, at the, about the size of the district office. Is it a permanent office or a kiosk? No, it's... Is it a proper building? A, okay. <laughs> then uh, it's... Um, yeah. First of all, they are permanent officers, okay. as by law required. Uh-huh. Number two, they are housed in different structures across the country as made available to NIA by the municipal, metropolitan, and district assemblies. Okay. Now, in a few cases, mm-hmm. the buildings are not that... Not that in, in a lot of cases, the buildings are not that... Um, good enough. Uh, some of them are incommodious, um, very limited space. Some of them, you have furniture, but you cannot put them in because they were not designed for NI purposes. Some of them insecure. Over a dozen of our offices have been broken into and laptops stolen and all of that. Even yesterday, two, uh, last week, Kukum, and then yesterday, um, got a report, another four laptops stolen from uh, an office that had been broken into. So we have challenges with, and then we're working with the, we've had engagements with the Inspector General of Police, and listing their support in securing up uh, our facilities. But 207, I mean, 292 officers, that's not a small number, mm. and and them um, exploring private security and all the other options. And sometimes, too, they go through our cognate institution, our sister um, uh, institution, let's say, just as an example, let's say a Beths and Deaths Registry Office, yeah. which adjoins NIA, then they may yeah. go through that. Um, they may not find anything attractive okay. to steal but, but based on this, my question actually was that Will there be, or my intended question, will, is there not the need to do another mass registration? Because we have at least 2 million. I say this because if you look at your sister agency, the EC, when elections are coming, sometimes based on the population, natural population growth rate, they do organize these registrations to bring in the new people. If we have about 2 million people who we know are eligible for the cards, can you not make a case to say, let's do another mass registration? Yes, we did our first one. We populated the system. <laughs> but some of our offices are not secure. The distribution of the things is some way. So let's get the resources to do another mass registration to clear this 2 million. Is it something you contemplate? Bernard, we were, in, we were before parliament in February mm-hmm. and we were before parliament last week. Mm-hmm. And on both occasions, the request came, particularly from the minority side mm-hmm. in parliament, that we do mass registration. Now, a second mass registration. NIA is a creature of statute. Mm -hmm. We obey the law. Mm -hmm. We have obeyed our law. Our Mm. law said, do mass registration. We've done it. Now, Mm. moving forward, if parliament, in its wisdom, in its wisdom, directs otherwise, why not? Just to bear in mind that during mass registration, you had a monthly budget of some 20 million on average, a monthly budget of 20 million Ghana cities to do mass registration. It's not cheap. The arrangements that are in place, but for the current pressure, would have been sufficient to let us go on with our work, Mm -hmm. let people 
um, get their cars in relative comfort. And mind mm. you, we are also going to, in addition, extend the extend the premium registration center at the NIA office. We're going to cre creating them all across the country. Um, um, we, I mean, in the regional offices to where it is possible. We're going to expand that um, and do that. So mass registration, if we are enabled by statute and by resources, we have the capacity. So you are not against necessarily oh, no, no, doing no, 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 no. But it's to, just that so we must they have change the law? Exactly. We are, right. I said How? we are a Explain. creature of statute. The law says do mass registration within a year. We have okay. done that. Okay. It doesn't authorize us to do a second mass, mass registration. registration. But if Parliament, in its wisdom, amends the law okay. and the okay. resources are made available, we worked with over 76,000 people, mm -hmm. most of whom are still unemployed and are available and interested, and will be willing to come on board to do a second bar. But, but um, Bernard, we didn't just do mass registration. We did mop-up mass registration mm. after the main event. Mm. Remember, mm. we went around, as soon as COVID abated, we went around and did expedited card issuance mm. project exercise mm. so that people would get their cards. There were many instances people would say to me, pay me money before I go and get my card. Where our officers were sitting there with the cards under trees mm. and in the schoolyards, wherever, in their church auditorium. And people, some people refused to go for their cards mm. on, and on, 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 for all kinds of reasons. Mm. So the mass registration itself does not necessarily guarantee the issue of that the, the issue solution one. will see, be yeah. what it is. But let, let me tell you, the reason why we had issues with... Um, a lot, some cards not being issued. It's multiple, but I think it's important to point the eight hundred and eight thousand. Yes, which that's the, that those been have used, been printed but not, not been issued. issued. You see, now the, 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 there is of course the inability of some applicants to travel from their communities to their offices. I was in, in Grovel, Kwame Nkrumah's hometown, and I was told about communities farther away from there, thirty kilometers away, that are very populous. And um, they would rather we come there. My f friend and classmate, um, Honorable uh, uh, Roxon Nelson Dafia Moko, tells me that in his constituency, where our office is located, it's not the most um, advantageous. South for, Dai. South Dai, yeah, for some of the people in the, in, in the district. And, and, and that some kind of leapfrogging, moving from one place to another to go and issue the cards, would be advantageous. That's an operational reality we are aware of. We considered we did it during the mass registration, you know, leapfrogging from one place to another. So the technique and template exists. But the facility... It costs money, it requires resources, security, transportation, all of that. And not all of our offices are yet equipped with vehicles and all of that. And mm. where you're going to have to take these equipment and personnel in uh, Haboboya or taxi, it's and not, it's not safe. quite a lot of risks, operational So it's better to keep the card where it is until so, there's a proper way of conveying the card if you have to at all. So we are exploring, mm. within the case of um, the Honorable MP and all those who are able to and, and willing to support, I get we it. are exploring how we can tailor specific solutions. For specific to, districts for, for, with exactly, challenges. Exactly. Then there is also, so I've talked about a reduction of uh, in the number of staff uh -huh. in, in our offices uh -huh. and then the lack of funds to embark on this outreach that we're talking about. There is also the matter I alluded to earlier, which is the motivation of even the, some applicants mm. to go and get their cards. And then um, we also have the reality that during the mass registration, some of our officers made mistakes. They stand down here at Adabraka. They print your card and it is printed in Zwarungu. It does not make sense. It is somebody's inattentiveness. Somebody's chewing gum, listening to gospel music or whatever it is. <laughs> it doesn't matter. But they are inattentive and they use a wrong center code. And, uh, I mean, one of the most oh. embarrassing was the mother of um, an honorable an minister, uh, Asen Subwache. His mother's card. Pantama printed in Saboba, you know, and then it took a while. The good news is that, and is that somebody's recklessness or carelessness. So some of it was due to us. One digit in the center code, and your card will move from a Cropon Kriapim to a Sante uh, uh, Mampon or a Sante Mampon. That sort of thing. But we have claimed all those cards. We know where every card is, by and large. I mean, 
So if you go to our offices and you administer your fingerprint on a machine, on the device, we'll be able to tell, even though you registered in Adabraka, mm. if your card is in Elambele, we will be able to retrieve that card, bring it here, and issue it to you. But the problem has been that somebody would have registered during Christmas when they were in their hometown. Mm -hmm. Then there was <clears throat> network connectivity challenge, which was the biggest factor in cards not printing instantly. The person will not go back or goes back, but the card was not ready the next day and then returns to Accra. Then instead of telling us that I registered in Elembele <laughs> or, 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 or Bimbela or Drasso, the person rather goes to uh, a police station, reports that his or her card is has been issued and missing, gets a police extract, goes to NIA, and obtains oh. a new card, depleting the stock of cards. You might have heard that there is shortage of cards at some mm. registration centers. It was a big factor until I directed that mm. every applicant must put their finger on the machine. So that we'll check if your card is still there. Exactly. And then at Lo and behold, a lot of people, uh, I didn't get the, the exact percentage. figures, but a lot of people, they have the card has not even been issued to them. The card is physically lying at an NIA office, but they have gone and misrepresented to the police, state official. Maybe they don't know where and, they, but they haven't, actually they haven't received no, the card at they all. They have not. Then I don't make excuses. So they haven't received the card, yes. but they go and say their card is lost. It's lost, that they, it has been issued to them and it is lost or damaged but lost generally. Then they get an extract. My card is lost. But when you they put their name or their fingerprint, fingerprint on the thing, the card pops up and it has not been issued. Isn't issued. It is lying there. Now, if we are honest with ourselves, we mm. can bring all those cards to the places where the people are. Uh -huh. Except that if it is you who did not make yourself available, then you must pay for it. It has to be at your but cost. At your cost. And how much does it cost to transport the card? Or you can go where the card is, now Thank that you, you know where it is. Thank you. But we are wow. willing to bring the card from wherever it is uh -huh. to, you know, we have a, we've designed a system that wow. is working. If a dead person's finger is administered on a machine, mm. we'll be able to tell okay. your nest of kin. It's 834. That. Let me say so. uh, uh, good morning. Uh, of course, to those of you watching on TV, this is not Kukui. This is not uh, Kuku David. This is Bernard and Godfrey and Nathan. We've been talking to uh, Professor Tiff, and I think Godfrey, he summarized a few things. We have a few headlines. 16.9 million registered, 16.5 million printed, 15.7 million issued. Yeah. These are changing rapidly. So about 800,000 cards printed but not yet issued. He was just giving the breakdown of the possible causes. Yes. In some cases, you have a region where logistically it's just difficult to come for the card. He's also admitted that some of his people may have made mistakes. They will send your card to a different place. But they found where those cards are. And some people, in trying to beat that system, go to police and say their card is missing and that type of thing. He also admits that because there are, there are people may be fewer, there are four, so sometimes there's, and they don't have the vehicles, so even if they know that there are 200 people in a place, they may not be able to send the car to you. Then on the difference between those who have had their registration done but card not printed yet, there are many issues, Some most of which are legal. So there are issues around double registration, adjudication matters, these are elaborate processes. So at least it helps us to know that almost all the comments you send, you, you should be able to know where your question is. Whether you've been registered and not had it printed yet, whether it's been printed and not issued yet, you can situate yourself. Whether you've also gone to report that your card is missing and it's not, you would know. We've also tried to make the case for possibly another mass registration because the numbers he gives us, at least 2 million people are eligible but don't have the cards. Yeah. And then he has also explained the nuances of how other agencies and their deadlines put pressure, pressure on, on the system. And again, we saw the leak letter. Yeah. We even saw the whole complaint around how the same registration was being done and whether it wasn't better for these guys to have the data than for a third party to have the data. I don't know whether that matter has been resolved because a lot of people were concerned about where their data was being stored. And it will surprise you that a lot of people, look, you're surprised, a lot of people prefer their data with you than with a company which is private. I don't know whether you resolved that matter in the leak letter. Was that, not, was, was that was that was that you resolved? It's not a, a, an issue for NIA to resolve. So your position and, hasn't changed. And, and, no, no, nothing has changed. NIA, I keep saying, it is a creature of statute. Uh -huh. Our mandate is clear. Uh -huh. We are to establish for Ghana 
a national identification system mm-hmm. which includes your biometric, which is a, an electronic biometric register. Mm-hmm. We are the custodians of it. Mm-hmm. We are to, by law, make the data in our custody available to other persons and institutions, mm-hmm. right? Authorized by law to have them. The law calls them user agencies. Mm-hmm. So um, the institutions such as NCA, the telcos, mm-hmm. they are a user agency. And we are entitled to give them data, just as we've given data to SNIT and NHIA and GRA. And we are doing at the moment with uh, Lands Commission, with Immigration, with BEFs and DEVs, with Passport Office and, you know, Controller Accountant and a whole lot of them, uh, Student Loan Trust. We we are at different stages of engagement with some of these institutions mm-hmm. in order to make these facilities um, av- available to them. And so, yes, that will continue the data, harmonization, and integration. But we always have to be purposeful. We always have to act legally. And we always have to act with diligence. These, and, and responsiveness, these are the impelling factors on our work and, 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 and the good corporate governance principles. So, mm. the inner institution that requires data from NIA only needs to request. Mm -hmm. And then we go through the appropriate legal and technical processes and make them available. But others have different considerations based on their realities and Mm. their mandates, Mm. which may not always make it possible Mm. for them to come to us in the way that other institutions... We will come to the issue of usage by other institutions, but I have a quick question from an MP before I bring Godfred in. So, dear Bernard, this is from uh, Kwame Agboja. He's MP for yes. Adaklu. Oh, yes. He says, Dear Bernard, population of Adaklu based on 2021 census is 38,649. Population of those 15 and above, 24,791 qualified to get Ghana card. NIA cards registered as of last week was 2,534. Breakdown, 1,844 1, cards printed, 690 cards to be printed. How are those in Adaklu expected to do their SIM registration? How are they expected to access their bank accounts? And how will they get onto the new register? And then he also goes on to say, there are many places in Adaklu where you cannot generate a digital address because of lack of telephone connectivity. You need a digital address to register for Ghana Card. In the country, is the country ready to apply Ghana Card to all these things? In conditions like this, this is a concerned um, member of parliament. Yes, uh, I agree to the honorable minister well. Uh, honorable, the MP. honorable MP well. <laughs> um, yes, yes, yes. That's why <laughs> I respect him very much. Um, yeah. And um, honorable, good morning. Mm. I think the there are multiple questions. Yeah. Um, again, I keep going back to our fallback position, which is the only correct position. We are a creature of statute. Mm-hmm. We are doing what we are prescribed by law to do. We are doing it in the constraints that he, as a member of parliament, appreciates. When we did the mass registration, Mm. we were in Mm Adakulu. We did not restrain or prevent anyone. We did not do it differently in Adakulu than we did in any other places. Same procedures, same personnel, people who were from the local communities were the ones we recruited to do the registration, fill in the forms, they speak the language. The district registration officer was from there access, facilities, opportunities, everything was equally made available to them as was made available to someone in Asante Bekwai or in, 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 in Zualungu. So we, that's number one. Number two, we have a situation where the number, of, I mean, the digital address that he mentions, it is a challenge across the country. It is the same net, network challenge, uh, connectivity challenge that prevented us from issuing cards Instantly, in most um, instances, because you just couldn't print. But look at the data. If you if you compare that with the situation that pre existed, twenty up to twenty seventeen, we had a situation where just about what four million enrollments had been done, less than um, um, nine hundred thousand cards had been issued between eight two thousand and eight. And 2017, today you have a radically different scenario of the figures that I gave to you. So we've made progress. We will continue to build on that progress. But in his community, there is no disadvantage. It isn't that there is um, some kind of 
Um, yeah, but look, prof, wait, if, wait, wait, just wait. hold on. If you have 2,534 cards mm -hmm. out of a qualifying population of no. 24,000. No, no. That is per day, he said. No. He just, he, he, he didn't say per day. Okay, so what is So that? he's saying that the population of those who are eligible are 24,000 and those who have registered are 2,500. Well, that so be, that's 10%. That, that would be a colossal that's, that's shift. Hold, hold on, hold on. Mm. I don't know where his data is coming from. And I, I'm sitting here, I'm not seeing You would be surprised data. if this is true? I, I would be, but, or maybe not, I don't know. Mm. But I can easily, it is, it is an empirical question. can verify question. this, yeah. Excuse me, sir. It's an empirical question. Mm -hmm. With a click of a button, we can get that data. Mm -hmm. How many people in that district are age 15 and above, mm -hmm. scientific? How many people have registered or registered during the mass registration? How many have registered post mass registration? Mm -hmm. How many have had their cards issued? Mm -hmm. How many cards are in different states of error or adjudication? And how many are awaiting a decision? And how many cards are wait to be issued? That is, are printed but are wait to be issued. When we were in Parliament last week, the minority side requested for um, district by district and region by region breakdown. That is something we are going to provide for them. But for now, permit me not to speak to data that is not before me, but is from um, somebody who may be seized with it, I, I no matter how he mm. came by them. Mm. But suffice it to say that with that question in mind, we will I'll contact my operations and technical people. We'll take a look at it. We are responsive and positioned to do all that is reasonably necessary and possible to make life easier. But you see, Bernard, this whole question is emanating from the idea that NIA must somehow facilitate the acquisition of the card by all people before July 31st or before a certain deadline. And I am saying and I insist that it is grossly unfair. We were not set up to, to do, do that, that kind of work. We cannot do it. <laughs> It's like asking a maiden to make a baby every three months. Not possible. It's not going to happen. God didn't design any maiden like that. We cannot do what is being expected of us. We can do what is prescribed for us and for which resources are made available from time to time. Mm. And so far, mm. that is what we've done. Just a quick question. What, what is, when you met Parliament in February, I'm sure you made this point to them. <laughs> to the extent that a lot of them are concerned about these numbers, I'm, I'm surprised. Was there a discussion on whether these deadline issues should even be removed at all? Because Parliament would have been a no, nice... The deadline would not be a question to us. No, you don't get me. You're saying that you, you have not been set up to work with that type of schedule. Yes. A lot of MPs from the minority that are complaining about some of these problems. Yes. Partly occasioned by these deadlines. So obviously that might have come up in the discussion. Yes, it did. And I'm saying simply that mm -hmm. those deadline issues are not properly addressed to you. IA. No, I'm, I'm talking about whether the, N, the, the MPs were minded to pursue the agency that yes, set up those deadlines. Because would, Parliament can invite anybody. That, that would be better answered yes, by the MPs. Yes, this is actually yes. a question to the MPs. Exactly. So Mr. Exactly. Abuja, I don't know what you think, but I just want to get a question around this. Based on Mr. Abuja's case study, is it reasonable to say that then in rural communities where connectivity is poorer we we'll probably have a lower coverage than urban communities no no, no. You, you wouldn't accept not that at all not at all the rural coverage was much better i mean it was much better in some rural areas than it was in lankwantana madina when we did our pilot we deliberately chose lankwantana madina uh, Bernard, we don't just set up registration centers. We go and do a survey in the field with equipment and test. So if it is here in Adabraka, we will come to the last EC registration centers, the Electoral Commission, the places they used. Mm -hmm. We will test all those, because that's what the law says we should use. We will test all those places within this area and find the one of the best connectivity opportunity for us. And then we mount our registration center there. So we may name it a uh, CTFM registration center, even though it may be 300 meters away, but that's because the name is used. In those circumstances, what happens then is um, we, we, I'm sorry, I got it a bit distracted. Yeah. We, we, we set up the center there mm. and we found that Lanquantanan Madina was one of the most problematic. That is why we chose to begin our 
piloting Which is in an that urban, community. Is an urban it's community. an urban area. But if you go to my village when I'm in my farm in Drasso, there no, is... No, but I'm asking, this, I'm asking this because Drasso. of the, the identified problem of connectivity. So, so I'm saying that the connectivity is a nationwide problem. If we were doing this Ghana card in any of the metropolises of the world, the bigger, you know, London, New York, and all, there would be nothing like I did not get my card because it would be instant issuance. Now, those places where there was instant, I mean, connectivity was strong, we printed. The Volta region, incidentally, incidentally, I've said this a couple of times, was the easiest region to register, quite apart from the topography. Queues were better managed, people were better behaved, environments were better, all of that. And connectivity was strongest in the Volta region, most places, surprisingly. But wherever in the country we didn't have network connectivity, Bernard, we set up print farms nearby. So in the night, the staff will work throughout the night, print the cards. In the mornings, the district officer will go around, pick them up, and take them to the distribution, I mean the registration centers, so people will go for them. The problem was that when somebody goes once or twice and it is not ready. Fatigue sets in, understandably. Some don't even go a second time. But the fact of the matter is that the cards were subsequently printed, boxed, batched, and sent to the centers mm. to be distributed. After the mass registration, they were brought back to the regional and uh, the, 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 the regional holding offices. Mm. Now they've been sent to the district offices. It is some inconvenience. But if we have to go through a little fatigue in order to get the Ghana card, in mm. order to do what it is that we must do. Then mm. so be Let it. Let me just, but an, I am another, a, a follow-up question in that sense. Mm -hmm. So if the EC says that the Ghana card possibly and the passport will be the only two forms of identification that they would use for their registration for the uh, voter card. Let me correct you before you continue, sir. Mm. It is not if the EC says that. That's what the Supreme Court ordered in yeah. 2020, remember? Okay, so actually what I'm going to say that. So, you know, we're, we're dealing with the issue of deadlines. So the, e, the, the EC would also have a timetable. So my, my question has more to do with our electoral, our election timetable also has some inbuilt deadlines. Yes. So how can we prevent the type of siege challenge of this 31st July kind of thing? if the EC also rolls out its timetable, because that also places a certain level of artificial deadline for you, because you are set up to do rolling. So I haven't seen their program, but this is a, pos it's a possibility. They also announced their registration, so maybe they will say we're starting January 2023, for which reason people will feel less rush. Have you anticipated that? How are you going to prevent the same okay, type so, of... So, um, <laughs> despite my, my, my invitation to you to treat this matter differently. You keep going back no, to... No, just answer second. my question. Forget. I'm, no, I'm, basically, I'm saying, I'm saying, that. I'm, just Bernard, saying Bernard, I'm saying simply the, that... over technicalizing the no, issue. No, no. I'm not... I'm just saying that you are asking me <laughs> yes. to comment on somebody else's potential yes. deadline. And I have answered it. You see, my answer is that... Uh -huh. Let me repeat. I would imagine mm. that the Electoral Commission mm -hmm. would be mindful of the reality of NIA mm -hmm. and would establish an arrangement, a continuous registration arrangement, not a deadline kind of arrangement. I am also confident that given that 17 million almost Ghanaians out of the voter population, the voter cohort, which may be about 19, 20 yeah. million, now that over 17 already have it, mm -hmm. that they're given the offices that we have opened, mm -hmm. given the institutional arrangements I have discussed, mm -hmm. given the expansions that we are going to do with um, um, the, the banks and the, mm -hmm. and the telcos and all of those things, there will be more and more opportunities for a lot of people to register before, as it were, um, the, the EC deadline kicks in. So I think EC will be sensitive to the reality of uh, the realities that impinge on the work of, of NIA. So that, that's because because you know the though. background to the question I asked, because the uh, opposition leader recently ac uh, accused the EC of being pliant and then used the fact that the Ghana card, which we know is the legal 
material to use to sort of question and then it went on to say that people should then make sure they acquire the Ghana card. Yes. So the the concern is 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 something that is already in the public domain, exactly. which you know. Yes, yes. And 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 to support your point, this law that requires the Ghana card mm -hmm. to be used for voter registration has been the law since 2012. Bernard, yeah. 2012 users of the Ghana card, mm -hmm. you know, things you cannot do if you don't possess the Ghana card. And they include registration mm -hmm. as uh, as a voter. And and, and that, that's a part yeah. of the reality. So, so yeah, go for it. Yeah, I have two questions, Prof. Yes. yes. So my first one has to do with the premium centers that you set up. I just want an update whether they are still in existence and whether, uh, because at a point we did realize that premium centers were running like normal centers. When at the peak, it's pressurizing the space. Yes. yes. So you basically couldn't get premium centers. So I'm just asking. So if the are they back at premium? Exists. So, so um, yes. The question people are asking. Yes. Mm -hmm. Okay. So we have not abolished our premium centers. Our premium centers operate on an appointment system. Mm. You make an appointment. You are given a designated time. You go there. When you sit before the officer, Mm -hmm. you will not spend more than 30 minutes. That is our system design. That has been working since 2020, okay. since we finished mass registration. Mm. Fast forward to October 2021. Mm. People started rushing there, not making appointments, mm. and thereby destroying the appointment system. So the person goes and stays, 300 or 1,000 people show up at NIA head office, where the system has been designed to serve, let's say, 80 people a day. Then they want to be served. They stay in a queue for four hours. They complain. By the time they get to the officer, which is where our time kicks in, after they get to the officer, they'll be there for about 30 minutes. It may extend to so they spend four hours, but, but, but because they, of the people who came into... And they did not have appointment. And when the person who had an appointment comes, they will be taken. They will see that person being taken. They will complain well, of corruption. Mm. So the system still exists. Go to Calvin, just across from where you are, mm. and you see it functioning beautifully. Okay. Mm. People have commended NIA for that excellent premium service until it was debased or destroyed by the avalanche occasioned by <laughs> other factors. All right. Then my second question has to do um, again avalanche. with avalanche. The uses of the yes, Ghana the use card. of the card. Is it still? We've 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 heard this. You can use it to travel. You can come into Ghana. What is what is the situation, the situation with, with that? In okay. terms of so, where can it go? So now? Can it go in at, where can it not go yet? Go so yet. before I come to that, mm -hmm. because you say uses, let me talk what the law says are the uses. <laughs> Everything law, law. Hey, we are. We, <laughs> <laughs> why put the lawyer in charge of something? <laughs> we, 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 you don't just have a lawyer. No, I you know. have a professor of no, governance and no, leadership. No, I, I, <laughs> <laughs> you have corporate governance at work. <laughs> You see, the things you are talking about, I can simply tell you, those who are coming, Ghanaians who are coming from outside, mm -hmm. Ghanaians who are holding the Ghana card, mm -hmm. they don't need a passport, a paper passport to enter Ghana. That's a short answer to your question. Ghanaians traveling to La Côte d'Ivoire or um, within the West African sub, sub region, mm -hmm. you don't have to have a paper passport. Mm -hmm. it, the Ghana card is not a replacement for passport. Mm -hmm. It is additional. Mm. It is an additional opportunity mm -hmm. for the convenience. You can easily travel within West Africa with the it. You cannot hold the Ghana card and arrive in Azerbaijan or, 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 or Germany. You, there must be bilateral agreements between Ghana and those countries for the Ghana card to be acceptable as such. Mm -hmm. But there is no question about its functionality and ICAO recognition as an international travel document. That is not an issue. Mm. Those are red herrings people but are raising. in terms but of those agreements, it's the foreign ministry that does those. Exactly. That, thank you. That is a different committee altogether that belongs to a different entity, the Ministry of Foreign Affairs and Regional Integration. But when you mention uses, mm -hmm. I wanted to use that opportunity of mm. the use to talk about the mandatory uses. What is live right now is that by law since 2012, mm -hmm. you cannot 
apply for and be issued a passport without Ghana card, a driver's license, a personal bank account. You cannot open or operate it. Insurance policy. Mm. You cannot transfer title in land, including your apartment. You cannot have um, uh, any transaction that relates to pension, any transaction that relates to national health insurance scheme. You cannot have any transaction that has social security implications. You cannot have consumer credit transaction. You cannot register to vote. You cannot pay your taxes, no matter how ardent you are. You cannot register your SIM card. And you cannot have access to any facility, any public or government facilities, services, approvals, or permissions, or benefits mm. without a Ghana card. So that can run into your... <laughs> free SHS or, 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 or you know, a LEAP or anything that is a benefit from Ghana or any other service facility that is customary available to the public or as may be published in mm. the Gazette by the governing board of NIA. This has been the law since 2012, not 2021, not 2019. Yeah, but we didn't make the arrangement to register so, the people until so, somewhere in 2017. So exactly, the law so was I, there, but we I, did not die I, because you were not ready. So exactly. not that So now, no. The point, <laughs> the point of emphasizing the law mm -hmm. is to is to cure the any mischief, any mm -hmm. idea mm -hmm. that somehow mm -hmm. somebody is trying to stampede, trying to bring in a new arrangement. It is there. Mm -hmm. The law is now being enforced because a critical mass of Ghanaians. Have been captured. Been captured. What about that, Ghanaians that who live abroad? Well. So Akusia says, Bernard, what about people in the diaspora who have local bank accounts and are not here to register the Ghana card? My mom still thinks she will lose her bank account. Yeah, her mom will not lose her bank account. Mm -hmm. The state is too sensitive to that. Mm -hmm. The bank accounts and SIM cards, I mean bank accounts, let me speak to that, mm -hmm. would be secure. Mm -hmm. Those who are outside, they have other forms of documentation. Whenever they come to Ghana, mm -hmm. they can activate their accounts. Uh, the, the account will be running active so that they cannot be accessing it and all of that. But if it is interested to be lodged in it and all of that, we, are, we have plans to begin the registration of Ghanaians in the diaspora in September of 2020, subject to availability of funds. But the operational plans, we're working with the Ministry of Foreign Affairs and Regional Integration, as we are by law required to do. We're doing that mm. so that we can go into uh, all of these communities and, and, and register Ghanaians so they can have it. Mm. Um, so that is let me read, and also let me read under age 15. a lot, a few comments because of time, yes, and please. then we will sort of see if you can touch on some of them. Sure. Some of which, if we have answers already, we'll just move on. Uh, my employee, University of Ghana, called me a number of times telling me my SNCC contribution will not go through if I didn't provide my Ghana card. I've gone to the NIA headquarters 21 times this year. NIA keeps telling me, quote, we can't help you now because we have not started addressing the double registration errors. So you mentioned that point. So is what he's saying correct? I'm surprised. He says they are telling him that we can't help you now because we have not started addressing double registration errors. I'm surprised. Um, just take the... We'll take his particulars for you. Particulars this shouldn't be the case. explore kid. maybe communication, but I will explore that. Mm. Uh, NI office in Accra will tell you they are short of materials to print the card. So why do we keep telling people to get their Ghana cards? This came in yesterday. Um, Bernard, I applied for the card in 2020. Um, so, uh, can okay, I comment quick comment, on that yes, one? Sir. Um, I think I have alluded to some of the reasons for the shortage. Mm -hmm. the, the, but with the materials, that's uh, overbroad. The, I don't know what he has <laughs> when I say you say technical, but if it is about shortage of cards, there are t I mean, the, the Registrar General called me the other day. There was shortage of cards at the Registrar General's department. I called Kendall Gansa, my head of operations. Within 30 minutes or the same day, cards were sent. And, and, and you know, so it may be that there, there are gaps, but these are not gaps as to affect like 19 times and all that. That's sort of strange. Thing. Okay. So I can, we can address do, okay. that. But yes. Ben, about, this is from Wise in Chebi. About this Ghana card, you should apply for the card in 2020 ahead of the election. And I've been following up since. I've been to the Chebi office on countless occasions only for the person there to keep tossing me and asking that I come in so we do it again. I went with my previous form which had all my data from them to tell me what I should do. They said I should do a new bed set and go to Accra for the registration. Mm -hmm. In fact, I have not been myself since. Funny thing is that one who's supposed to do the bed set is asking me for 200 CDs. See, yes. Okay, long story. All, all those so I'm just trying to understand his challenge. 
um, is do you understand what is what's going on yes, here? Yes, yes. And and, and, and and um, I would like to also talk to this person. First of all, um, they don't have to. You cannot do another registration. You will not get the card if you do another registration. That's how the system is designed. Uh, that was but, the point but, you made earlier. Yes, but there are but there are instances, very rare instances, where somebody has correctly gone through the system. Mm -hmm. Then come the time of printing, the person's data cannot be found. Very strange, but it has happened. And we have a few of those cases. So in that case, there is authorization for the process to, to be, be done taken. again. Okay. So it is so, so it may be wise false in this category. Exactly. Otherwise, so whoever we, is telling I like this. To talk to that okay, this one is just find but out the birth certificate business is not they, in your area. They, they no, they shouldn't do that. If they whatever or documents they presented originally. Should be the same. It should be the same. same. If they were vouched for, they should just come and yeah. we'll sort it out. Fantastic. But going to do a second birth certificate okay. is another matter. Uh, good on better than team. We went to NI office in Ashaman to do our card. I was told I should book an appointment for third October before I can do my card. This is Richard from Ashaman, Jericho. Okay, so that is a worry because it it means that the officer there has determined that there is no card or there is a shortage of card and it's projecting that October is when I don't know what basis uh, the person would have for doing that. But again, um, I will um, get my operations people to mm. look at, is it Ashaman you said? Ashaman, Jericho. Hello, Bernard, assist me. Why the issue of invalid Ghana card? <clears throat> I went to my bank to link my card to my account and I was told my card was invalid. I went to the NI office and I was told to do another one and pay 30 CDs. What is an invalid card? Is it possible? So, so um, the some of the telcos mm -hmm. were telling, of, and the banks mm -hmm. were telling some people that mm -hmm. their cards were not valid. Mm -hmm. There were technical issues that those institutions were having. Okay. As I have admitted, there are a few instances where somebody may be holding a card, mm -hmm. and yet on the chip, for whatever reason, they not have really. sat on oh, it, it's damaged, it cannot be read. So there may be some instances okay. where the card is uh, invalid as in destroyed. Okay. But the frequency with which we were being told, it that was, was not the case. Was, okay. As soon as they procured, they procured the verification devices. And Bernard, I can assure you that 25 out of the 25 universal banks in this country have all been onboarded onto the NIA verification system. You see, we have the identification system. We have the verification. When you go to the bank, they must verify you. It means that they must procure verification devices, some of them like the one EC users and some like a mobile phone. If you show up with or without your card, we can verify you because now they have procured the verification devices. 23 out of 25 have deployed them nationwide so they can verify you with a card, without a card, as long as you have a finger. And even if there is no network connectivity, you can't be verified. It's the same with the telcos. We have onboarded all the telcos, and uh, you know it's it's fine. So the situation that prevailed five months, six months ago, your card is not valid, and all of those things. As reduced. My mother was bedridden, so she that, my mother is bedridden, so she doesn't have a Ghana card. Her situation is that the doctors visit her at home for medical care. Unfortunately, without her Ghana card, she will not receive a pension after thirty first July. Please, what can NIA do to help us in this situation? We have household and institutional registration service arrangements. Our household registration, which will speak to the needs of this particular person, um, is that you must have a minimum by law. You must have a minimum of, and I mentioned law again, by law you must have a minimum of five persons and you pay a fee of 100, um, um, 150 CDs per person and will come home and do the registration. Uh, Special arrangement? Yes, by just a simple request letter to the executive secretary. Okay, a few more done. comments. Bernard, I tagged you in a video where a lady in Sunyai complained about the stinking attitude of the NI officers who were on phone the whole time and didn't attend to her. Also, can't we use other government agency offices in the district and towns across the country for registration and delivery? For example, we could use Ghana Post or STC. So three questions in one. So so the the um, attitude, the conduct of the NI staff, that video has been sent to me by a hundred okay. million, million <laughs> people. Okay. Um, I've okay. seen it. Okay. Um, I have detailed my having received a report. Okay. But at training, I personally conduct training on these issues on administrative justice, on fairness toward the Ghanaian, yeah. on respect for yeah. uh, uh, members of the public. That conduct was atrocious. We are going to deal with it professionally. Mm -hmm. However, 
on the question of distributing cards, we don't distribute cards. Mm. It is not like a letter. The card is issued to you biometrically. Mm. And it is issued by a trained, certified professional who is tacked to you forever that it was Ken Atefa who issued this card to Bernard Able. And it is in the record. Having forever. confirmed that this is the Bernard. This is the Bernard. Because there's something you do because before you get the card. Of the so when you get the card, it's, it's not just like a letter they send. Exactly. You have to put your hand on something again. So we've engaged with Ghana Post. <laughs> okay. They, in fact, expressed interest uh -huh. that it is not possible to do it that way. What is possible, however, mm -hmm. is co locating with Ghana Post. Mm. They have facilities across the country. We've identified about 17 of them that we jointly identified that we can use. And we are exploring using them in order to expand the opportunities. But it also goes into the question of availability of funds. If I identify 200 other places I can use uh, with NHI, for example, they are our sister institutions. Yeah. SNED, they are all on our board. There are facilities we can use, but we must pay people to do, the to work. do that work. The equipment is there, but mm. we must pay people and the payment of people is about resource allocation, mm. which comes... So that the MPs must listen from and decide what, what they want to do. Exactly. A few final questions. Um, good morning, Bernard. I registered in 2019 at the trade fair, trade fair in 2019. As of last week, the La Municipal Office doesn't know where my card is. What is the explanation? Now a bank is holding my funds. So I'm surprised and, and sorry for this gentleman, but yeah. as I, I say... If he goes to the office and administers his finger, mm -hmm. we, can, we have claimed the cards. That is, we have identified where each card is supposed to be. So we can locate his card. Sometimes people have gone to the wrong district. Somebody may be living at Kanda, but doesn't know the, the name of the district in which. And so they may show up somewhere nearby. And then they get frustrated. I am not saying that is the case for this person. I, 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 mm. I sympathize. But we need to know our communities well, go to the right places. Mm. But again, I like to um, follow, up on this. follow up on this particular Ghani, you have all this. There's one I knew you'd be interested in, based on the introduction. Bernard, I'm reliably informed that there are some agents who can quicken the Ghana card at a fee, especially people mm. who are from the diaspora. I don't know if this is correct. But it's, they can it's, quicken. It's, yes, so it says they can quicken the process for getting the card at a fee for those who are from the diaspora. He doesn't know if this is correct, but it smells fishy. This is inside filler from airport. Okay, so <laughs> what I know is that our registration center at the head office mm -hmm. is a premium registration center. Okay. And it is a favorite place mm. for Ghanaians in the diaspora who mm -hmm. visit Ghana. Mm -hmm. Yesterday, I got a call and, and I saw a message. I haven't had a chance to uh, read it or I mean, respond yet. Where someone in government was telling me about some people who had come uh, to for NPP uh, uh, Delegates Congress mm -hmm. and want to register. That's a normal thing. And obviously, they would want to register through the premium registration center. It is at a fee of 250 cities. Now, if I'm going to get involved, I'm going to get involved in ensuring that they get an arrangement. That is to say, an appointment. So that's a, a formal that process, a formal legal, process. not giving no, the money to chop in his no, pocket. No, that there's a formal process. And when you go there, you pay at the car bank office at the end. So it's a bank premises. you are paying to. You are not, not paying the bribe. Staff, no. Okay. Uh, Bernard, please ask for me. Usually your passport is stamped by immigration when you enter Ghana. So with the Ghana card, will they stamp it? <laughs> <laughs> the Ghana Immigration Service has a special arrangement for yes. recognizing um, Ghana card. There yes. is an electronic a chip on it, a 148 mm -hmm. kilobyte chip. That has a lot of capacity, and they swipe it, and the information is recorded that you have um, arrived in the country. Mm -hmm. Yes. Very but I just want to ask a question. Yes. So in reverse, if I'm leaving Ghana, you mentioned in the South West, region, yes. Yes. what should happen now, because the Ghana card is, is now active, what should happen? Do I show up at the airport with my luggage and card and my passport or luggage and card? Or Without, can you just oh, yes, for West, I'm going to Nigeria. Yeah, I'm yes. going to Nigeria. Any, any, any departure point mm -hmm. with an electronic gate yeah. mm -hmm. within the West African sub-region, you can use a Ghana card to travel. Okay. An e -gate. The Ghana card alone without yes, the yes, passport. Yes, yes, yes. Okay. Within West Africa. I'll end on a political note. Last week, uh, Dr. Baumia said that he would prefer a Ghana card to a thousand interchanges. It led to a lot of oh, memes dear. on social media. <laughs> no, no, it's an important question. Yes, in fact, yes, yes. The, to the extent that, oh, in fact, Otokuna was at the MPP event, said he bought his bread. <laughs> That's <laughs> why I said, oh dear. Yes. <laughs> so uh, for me, I, I just wanted a couple of things. 
is is he, are we overhyping the Ghana card or do people misunderstand his point? Do you, do you get my point? I, I think that there is a bit of a misunderstanding. In fact, the, the, the advantages, the benefits of the Ghana card have not yet been appreciated. It is underappreciated. There are too many different conversations going on in different areas that are obfuscating the facts and confusing people. And so we, we are interested in focusing on what is most important right now. You cannot begin to imagine the exponential impact of the Ghana card on our civility, level of civility even. You see, when, when it's two million roughly has been captured, you have a situation, Ghanaians will never queue again. We will never queue for anything like going to register to vote. If the Electoral Commission's plans as um, raised by uh, the minority uh, come to fruition, you would have continuous registration just with your Ghana card. I can even envisage a situation where the EC may say one day, I'm extracting the voter register from the National Identity Register. Because when a person is 18, it's automatic. Because we are going to register people from age zero to infinity. It means football age will be a thing of the past. <laughs> when you are 60, it is known. So the age bracket for, for voting, we sanitize that space. There will be no contestations about citizenship. There will be no contestations about age. SNET will be a cleaner place. Pension payments and all of those things would have been sanitized. Identity conflicts, identity claims. Mm. Listen, I had a letter from a lawyer wanting to know that in his lifetime, this deceased person, while he was alive, which town did he describe as his hometown? Because it has implications for a certain <laughs> contest in court about Wales, where this person is Eve by father and Ashanti by mother. And both sides are claiming him. And the lawyer thinks that that will settle, that the, will settle the matter for him. <laughs> okay. There are all kinds of mm. potential benefits, direct and collateral. Mm. But I'm talking about sanitizing the space. I'm also talking about the interconnectivities, the, the data harmonization and integration. Mm. When we clean up and we have this single source of truth, this truth anchor mm. in our system, we would have solved a lot of the problems for health insurance, for SNED, for mm. all the cognate institutions mm. that I mentioned. So the Electoral Commission alone, if they come on board in the way that I, I imagine they might. These cues and harassment these is going to stop. go away. Mm. And, and voting in Ghana may be as pleasurable it's a bit easier. as voting in mm. Canada and Australia mm. or elsewhere. Well, just, just a quick question. Okay. Yes. Yeah. Sorry, we've kept you. He has a training, but we've, yeah. we've arrested he's, him. He's, training, he's the training the people. <laughs> he's training the nation too. Yes. He has <laughs> a training at 8.30. <laughs> but we beg. Yeah. Ghani, sure. give us 10 minutes. We know the NIE's financial standing has always been precarious. Yeah. A bit. And listening to him, mm -hmm. a lot of the things they want to do require mm -hmm. money. Mm. money. Has their financial standing improved? Oh, significantly. Um, otherwise, how would we have achieved the strides we have? Let us remember the mm. financial, I mean, the, the registration challenges that we are facing today. A registration challenge is occasioned by development since October 2021. Mm. Before October 2021, you didn't hear NIA complaining. We were quietly minding our own business and doing extremely well. And that's what we've done. Now, since October, mm. because of the twin Dead pressures, lines. the banks and the telcos, this pressure has come. But within, within those confines, government has given us additional funding which enabled us to do the expanded registration sites that I talked about at the mm -hmm. Stadia. But Ghanaians abandoned them as soon as there was an extension. Now that the deadline is coming, we are now having to find funds to repeat and expand the facilities that we had previously made available. So as far as government has been very ardent in the support, and I salute all the former, uh, the former presidents of Ghana, including the late President um, um, Rawlings, all of whom recognize the importance of Ghana Card, mm -hmm. registered for them, and used the occasion of their registration to advocate for uh, the, the registration and acceptance of the Ghana card. Mm. And I also salute, of course, the leadership of the president and the vice president in this regard. But above all, the staff of NIA and the good people of this country mm. who have 
tired to get the card. Mm. And for those who are still struggling mm -hmm. to get the Ghana card, I, I, whatever it is that I have explained mm -hmm. has been to, exp to, to account to the people why we are where we are. But it doesn't take away the energy, the enthusiasm, and the concern to do better so that people will get the service wow. that, that they deserve. And we are going to explore. I will take on the suggestions that have come up mm -hmm. and yeah. see what else that can be done too. Ellie make says, good morning, Bernard. I've enjoyed listening to Prof. He's a big man. <laughs> yeah, he, and he has applause. I thank him. He said he likes your English too. <laughs> <laughs> I thank the person. All right. Thank you, Prof. We, we've kept you a, a long time. Look, there's a lot of questions. Um, luckily, the, we are in touch. To be honest with the listeners, we are, NI is not very difficult to get. So your your PRO is quite easy to get. Yes. So I'll, I'll, Ghani, Dr. Yeah. Ghani. Yes. So we will That's continue nice with him for some of the <laughs> specifics. He's very easy to get. So I, we need I to commend him for that. I tried calling him. Count, he never answered. Oh dear. He doesn't know you. <laughs> it's, it's who I, you know. I sent him a message and I said, "You gave me yeah, his contact." You, there's a code. <laughs> I will, I will you, you, don't, you don't have the code. <laughs> 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 All right, so thank you for that. Thank you. That was to expose. <laughs>